Hey guys, I'm gonna be like them, not like how they always say nonchalant when we begin the video. So hi guys, we're back. See how it feels. This is so crazy. I was about to turn it. I had my son in the turn it. Let's take part two. Hey guys. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. We are back. Yes, we have back. Because I really went too far. No, no, no. Yeah, we went too far. Sorry, no two of us here. There's no two of us. Okay. We're here to talk to you today about. Let's talk about sex. Part two. This is a highly requested video. After the first one about celebrity, you guys were really interested and were firing us with questions. And after we put it out there on our Snapchat, you guys came back with some more fire questions. And so we're here to answer them and give you kind of like deep insight into our walk and our perspective on different questions surrounding celebrity. So yeah, stay tuned. Make a move. K.O. So pretty much this is like a Snapchat Q&A celibacy edition. I grouped all the questions into themes as opposed to just having the individual questions and write it all down so it's gonna fire it at us. Someone said, can you be celibate if you lost your virginity? And of course you can yeah. be celibate if you lost your virginity. Living proof. Um, first and foremost, people are gonna say the whole thing of you're abstinent, no, you're not celibate, you're abstinent. But when you search for definition of abs abstaining and celibacy, they cross over so much and that's just there's just confusion all over the internet as to what is what um what we take celibacy to mean is where you have decided not to have sex up until marriage and you're doing so for a purpose so in our case the purpose is it's god's word so if you decide that you have had sex before and now you're planning on not having sex and you're waiting till marriage and it's because of a purpose then you you can be celibate have you faced temptation no nope. and how do you <laughs> deal with Temptation. God doesn't say anything. Oh, um, I don't. I haven't faced temptation because I don't put myself in the situations. Like it depends if it's talking about temptation, though. Okay, well, if we're talking about temptation, like okay, I've been with somebody, and then you know things get a bit hot and steamy. No, that that hasn't happened. I mean, because we don't date or haven't been dating. Okay, but tempted as in seeing something or like speaking to somebody on the phone, and then the conversation start moving towards the place it shouldn't be in ungodly hours <laughs> like <laughs> i guess in that way but other than that i don't feel like i've had temptation to have sex because i feel like in order for me to really go to the full mile will be an it'll be a, an absolute catastrophe i would actually <laughs> have to be really i don't even know to really go the whole mile but i think the temptation lies in like just blurring lines I guess would be my temptation so like, let's just say for example there's one particular guy who is trying to pursue me and I know that this guy I'm is so <laughs> he's a bad dude and I know that what he he doesn't want to do anything like let's just say holy with me but the guy is a fine bobo mm -hmm. he's very sweet <laughs> that's right and you know on the snapchat <laughs> he'll be doing certain things get maybe get a new haircut or whatever and I'm just thinking hmm Come see him, and the guy's he's, he's good looking in it, so I'm just like, hmm, you know, my flesh would <laughs> want to come and see ya, my flesh would want to, <laughs> <laughs> but but you have to say to yourself, is the temperature's just the girl said, I would want to taste the lip, taste oh my god, but Chicken. at the end of the day, you have to read it in and just say to yourself, why are you doing this? Okay, mm -hmm. number one, I'm doing this for God. This period that I wanted to be celibate, I'm doing it because my number one priority is to focus on Jesus Christ. Have I do you? not need any guy clouding my judgment. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I know that this guy doesn't want anything serious with me. So mm -hmm. if I go on a date now just to please myself, like short term gratification, mm -hmm. when this guy starts calling me mm -hmm. in the night, trying yeah. to have conversations with me, trying mm -hmm. to pursue me, I don't want any part of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not involved. <laughs> so why should you then go on the date with this guy? Because then, number one, you're leading him on and you're 
starting something you cannot finish. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do VSA. Don't start, start something you, you can't, can't finish. finish. That all being said, even if we were going on dates, I feel like we have kind of a mind frame whereby we will set boundaries and put precautions in place that if I go on a date, it's not really going to get to a situation where there's gonna be that much temptation, unless the temptation is just looking at somebody. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna put myself in an environment whereby you feel free that you can start touching me. So I'm not gonna have those kind of things arising. So how do you deal with the roast? Spread across the land. Yeah, I try and maintain a pure mind. Like for me, it's like, I'm not just not having sex, I'm trying to do it for God. Yeah. So I don't really roast like, oh my God, like I'm counting, it's been a hundred and this much days. Yeah. No, I don't think like that. But obviously when there are times when I'm, get a bit temptation, feel a bit free. You know, you're just like, you feel a bit Like I said, you're saying, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can't think about Jesus and sex at the same time. I'm telling you, it's impossible. <laughs> you can't leave it up to your own devices. I can't do this alone, innit? So I just, Try and seek God when I'm resting, to be honest, and say, God, so what's happening, but you <laughs> disperse that feeling, mate, it's all. Do you ever feel like you're gonna be too old before you find somebody you want to show yourself with? Will you be single forever? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a private matter, but I'm, I'm willing to share. Yeah. Listen, guys, let's be honest. <laughs> honest. Okay. Let's, I'll be very honest. I know I look 16 at times, <laughs> 18. I get it quite a lot. I'm 22 years of age. I'll be 23 by the end of this year. Next year. I have told, no, 23 end of this year. And I'll say next year she'll be 24. Yes, I said, if I, I told these girls, if I reach, <laughs> God, this one, I'm, I'm telling masses, God, so this one, you really shine your ear for me. <laughs> if I reach the end of 2017, not even a perspective, I said everyone should section me. I want to be admitted to mental health. <laughs> because what is like, you know, I have plans and I feel like if you don't come in that time, well, yeah. I don't finish uni, I'm ready, God, I'm ready for this, I'm <laughs> ready, finish university, I'm ready, you know, when will it be? I do get afraid sometimes, not afraid that I've made a bad decision, but afraid that I won't meet anybody that is willing to um, take this on, you know, that's it. But at the same time, I feel like how you come out of that is you just have faith in God. Like, yeah. Have, when you start a journey with Christ, right, you will see that things that you ask him for, not everything you ask him for, but things that you don't even ask him for, he provides for you. In Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. So that scripture alone, this, it just tells you that you shouldn't be afraid, you shouldn't be scared. Like, even if, let's say, Zoe Ty is 24 and, um, there's still no perspective. Her, her perspective might come when she's 25. Like, I just have faith that God will always provide um, each and every one of us a proper, correct, correct husband. That's right. I trust God in it, so I know he'll bring yeah. the guy at the right time. It's like a banter, but yeah. not a banter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not scared, because I'm really comfortable being single, so that's why I'm not scared. But I'm scared for the time where I get uncomfortable being single and there's still no perspective. That's what I'll be scared for. You really that'll be like, that'll be like well. when I'm, let's say, because I don't really want, I don't want to get married on 28. So let's say 27, hey. I found um, a perspective, right? And knowing these, let's say they're all married up. Everyone's married and I'm still single. I'll, I'll be shaking through. in my boots at that point. <laughs> and you know she's the oldest. She's a, she should be the first one to marry now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's cool, man. I have to finish university until 2017. That's why you have. <laughs> oh, man, maybe I'm watching this. They got till 20th December, 11:59. <laughs> After that, gates are closed. <laughs> I'm gonna mind my business and go on with my life. I'm telling you, I think it's a joke. Would you go on a vacation before marriage? Personally, I will, because I can control myself. Me too. Verbally. <laughs> I don't give a D, but I don't give a D. Because, like, I feel like I can control myself, yeah. I really do. But these guys feel like, based on my, based on what I'm saying, that I can't, the environment of the vacation, you've had your breakfast, you know, you're looking all airy, and then you go and you change. You guys have a good uh, activity. Then in the evening, you go and wear a slinky dress. Because it's hot, you can't be, you can't be dressed in. You can't be dressing so modest. And then no. you'll be drinking cocktails, then he'll put his hand on your hand, you'll be gazing into each other's eyes. And this is what you'll be doing day one, day two, day three. Maybe then you decide, oh, let's go to the bar tonight. Let's go check this place. You two, you'll be drinking, 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 enjoying yourselves. So let's even say that you're staying in the same bed. Ha. What ha what's going to go on now that you two are intoxicated? You know, once you're intoxicated, everything is, everything is up for grabs. <laughs> 
even if he just does this you can't even see what i'm doing even if he just does this all of a sudden <laughs> your, your your senses are heightened to the sky <laughs> how are you going to be able to control yourself maybe first day second day you can then what are what of the fourth day when you guys are you're now very comfortable you're even more comfortable than usual by day five you i dare you to tell me that he wasn't touching your virgin <laughs> you tell me that that guy is going to be touching your virgin no, and i'm not and i'm just not going to put myself in no, that situation the gym, so the, now the virgin could be off for grabs but my god is greater whatever your god is great he said <laughs> flee from sexual immorality flee <laughs> how is it your no. spirit is willing don't get me wrong your spirit is willing but, but my flesh, flesh is weak. weak it's weak your flesh is weak <laughs> don't put yourself in it's that situation weak. If you're not gonna drink at all, fine. But holiday is not the same as this England because this is what the, the argument they were using. But in the UK, you're not having sex with him. So why should you go to another country? It's, in, in the UK, I'm not wearing a bikini. In the UK, see him topless on the beach. Are we drinking pina coladas from, from a pineapple? <laughs> you know, it's a completely different atmosphere. DPMO. Now you've gone to another country. I'm telling you, in that holiday place, mm -hmm. it's not the same as the UK. Anyway. Like vitamin D. This is not so girls. Beverly, Beverly can't go on her day, yeah. I shall go wherever the hell I want. I believe you could. I don't believe you could. Ha! Jesus, defamation of character. Whilst dating, when do you let a guy know you're celibate and how do you say it? As soon as possible, I think it's always best. As soon as you feel like the conversation's gonna come up or the guy says something and you're like, is he saying something? Is he heading towards something sexual? Bam. Yeah. From in there. <laughs> Cut it off. Yes. Let it out. I'm celibate. Like don't say it. Say it with tax. Don't just be like he says. It doesn't matter. Ah, what do you mean? I'm celibate. I'm celibate. I'm celibate. When I when I said it, I, I actually I, I built it up like because I think it was the first time I was on a date and me and the guy had seen each other for like couple of weeks and um cool <laughs> yeah so i was just a bit nervous and the guy hadn't even tried to put his paws or anything like that put paws on me he just had to come on to you yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i just thought it was like the right time to say it because things were like progressing a little bit and i was thinking i don't know what this is going so i better tell him and when in the car and i was just like oh um i've got something to tell you i don't know how you're gonna take it but like I said you could cut me off after this and he says this guy's alarmed what are you, what are you saying <laughs> what, what can make me cut you off at this point and he's like no like just tell me just tell me and i'm just like um okay like i was proper nervous i don't know why and i'm just like oh, okay um i'm celibate and he's just like oh okay then he went quiet for a bit don't do and i just i think i started filling the space trying to explain to him why i chose to be celibate and he was just like oh it's cool he understands like then he's like oh he's not in it for the laffy taffy the river rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get huggy, so <laughs> he's like, doesn't matter, like, you know, he would prefer it that way because he's been in relationships with girls, you know, the normal palaver of what boys really think they're, you don't know, what you don't know the latitude of what you're saying. Yeah. So this is a specific situation, right? How can one handle a situation where you told a guy you want to be celibate and he says, okay, he's going to be celibate with you. And then he starts talking about sex before marriage. Okay. First, what I would do is I'll make him aware of what he's doing. So I'll say, are you aware that the time period you're talking about having sex is actually before we get married? And we both agreed that we're going to be celibate to marriage. Have you changed your mind? Is what I would ask him. And if he was like, no, I haven't changed my mind, we'll be like, well, then we need... If you haven't changed your mind, then we can't talk like this. Mm -hmm. Like, then ask him, is this something you, you really think that you can commit to? Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that I want you to think about it. I don't want to answer right now. Actually, take the time out. Think about it between, like, with yourself. And then come and let me know. Mm. I don't need an instant answer. I don't need you to say yes because you just want to stay with me or whatever. And on top of that, if this guy now says to you, he does actually think that he can be celibate, this is a time for you to make a decision. Yes. For me, anybody that tells me they can't be celibate with me, okay, bye. Mm. Like, bye, bye. It doesn't matter how many credentials he's this, he's that. He's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, you have to go. But that's just me anyway. And you have to decide, is that, is that you? A guy asked, um, what do you do in a situation where um, you both agreed to be celibate and how do you go about it? So let's say in this situation, what I would suggest f with the girl that has the boy that is now talking about sex before marriage, I feel like if he agrees to be celibate with you, you should set some boundaries. Because mm -hmm. the relationship that you had when you were having sex, 
should be different from the relationship you're gonna have 100%. when you're not having sex mm -hmm. i just want you guys to remember that this whole thing is that it's god you have to send to your relationship without god because mm -hmm. I don't think any of us here would be celibate should we was it not for God. I have I have no like people have asked us, give me a reason why I should be celibate if I'm not religious. I can't give you one yeah, thing. No, one, no, no, not one. Right. There's no one reason I can give you. So center it around God. If you guys are feeling some type of temptations, maybe you should go and open the Bible together and pray together. If this is really where you want to go, marriage, then maybe this is something you should start in your relationships. I don't, don't want to feel like we're excluding the people that maybe aren't Christian or mm. haven't started the walk yet. So if like you aren't um, Christian, a reason that you can be celibate, I think we mentioned it in the last video, just because um, it helps you find clarity and you, it helps you kind of decipher who is not for you and who is for you. Like you don't waste your time in situations because you're not persuaded by the D or the D is good or even a boy like, oh, the persuade is sweet, that's why you're staying. Mm -hmm. You know what you want. You can get rid of people easily from your life. It allows you to focus more on um, more important things in your life. I think it's, this more applies to boys that normally get kind of really caught up in the whole um, persuade kind of thing where girls are dragging you up, down, left and right, um, derailing you from your destiny. Like you just focus on what you need to be focused on. You get a um, restraint over that temptation, restraint over that um, desire to always want to have sex and the skills you've learned from being disciplined in that um, difficult aspect of your life, you can then apply it into other areas of your life and it'll help you prosper. I feel like the same thing applies to females because in the sense that if, but this is not just about celibacy, this is about boys in general. Um, we, t we talk about boys on this channel because we, we feel like in, there's a lot of things, for example, in relationships that girls struggle with and we're just here like, you know, female power, girl power, which is why we talk about this stuff. Yeah. But it's not outside of this YouTube stuff. We don't sit here talking about about boys mm -hmm. because we have so much other things that we're trying to do with our lives. Mm -hmm. So with the whole celibacy and with just boys in general, if you just like kind of like cut this whole boy mentality from your mind, it allows you to focus on things that you need to focus on in, on in life. If your mind's always clouded with boys, 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 the things that you should be doing as a young person, you you're not, you're not gonna be doing. doing. Yeah. You're gonna be thinking of, when is he gonna text me? Mm. Or just be getting stressed over man then. There's no way I, I, I don't wake up and, and think about guys. I, I have so much things to think about. <laughs> boys won't cross my mind not one time. And it can't, it can't, mm. there's no space for it. I also encourage everyone to get into that space. Because there's no time for all of this, like, boys, 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 boys. We have bigger and better things to be doing. Mm. Look, people ask, does that mean nothing else? No foreplay, whatever you count as foreplay. Personally, what I... <laughs> for me, that means... Celibate means nothing. You don't touch my body. My body is the holy temple of God, in it? As we've said in this video several times, purity. And the reason um, I'll say, especially no to foreplay, no to all sexes, because... Um, during oral sex or during foreplay, so I'm about to be real vulgar here, but as a guy you can ejaculate, as a girl you can have an orgasm and it's like, I feel like in that way you're kind of finding a new way to have sex because the aim of having sex ultimately, if you're having it for pleasure and not in, for the purpose of creation, is to have an orgasm. Mm. And so it's like you've kind of found a loophole and found like a new way to have sex yeah. without having sex yeah. because you still get what you want out of the situation. Yeah. And it's like you're not fooling God. God knows you. He knows your thoughts before you even think them. So he knows you found a new way to kind of like overcome the no sex before marriage thing. Yeah. I would say you can't prick God. Like God already is like he created you. You know like when your parents say, I know all your tricks. <laughs> That's what my mum would say. I know all of your tricks. I didn't know it's like that. The Bible says that he, he who looks after a woman and lusts for her has already committed adultery in their heart. And um, I feel like maybe back in the day, people knew that the only instruction in, in terms of like sex outside marriage was that you just shouldn't have sex. So you have this whole space of, oh, what can I do or what can I not do? But Jesus realized that in people's minds, like people's minds and their hearts, they were already having sex with people. Mm -hmm. So they would be looking at this person and you're having sexual um, fantasies about this person. You basically already crossed that boundary with that person because with anything that you do in life, it always starts with a thought. There's a thought and then there's an action that comes for, from that. So before I will be able to kiss this guy, I look at his lip and think, hmm, that's a nice lip, before I kiss him. As we said, like it's all subjective. When you get to a certain um, place in your walk, those thoughts won't even cross your mind. Question was from some guys: was, How can boys cope with being celibate when there's more pressure on them than there is on girls? 
Um, first of all, I would actually just like to say, boys out there, but I really commend you. Ha the hat goes off to you. Hat man. off, and I really, like, I respect you because I feel like it's, it's not, it's not easy, especially for mm. guys in this modern society where a man's um, manliness is defined by um, how many girls he slept with and how much of a dog he is and mm. all of the kind of superficial things. Mm -hmm. So I, I respect you for making that decision. 100%. For a guy, how can you cope with the pressure? Um, we've been saying it throughout the whole video, you just have to know why you're doing it. Yeah. Um, you know that it's not about your friends, it's not about your friends' opinions, it's not about what anyone thinks, it's about your relationship with God, like Beverly was just saying before. It's about building your intimacy with Christ. Much for, for, we feel like for a, guy to, for a guy to cope with all this pressure that is around him to have sex and what you're going to have to do is you're really going to have to set your eyes on the Lord mm. because it's going to be like pretty much everything is against you all your mates tell you to have sex girls themselves you tell your celibate they'll be sending you nudes mm. so you really are going to have to look towards God and ask them to strengthen you mm. but if you try to go on the celibate journey by yourself and you don't include you don't include Christ in this you will definitely struggle because you have the, the core value for you being celibate will be missing mm. yeah and I, for guys especially i think male friends who are on the same journey as you it is imperative mm. you need people around you to, people who will co-sign your your masculinity or co-sign your identity in christ right. to be to be a christian for a guy to the world you're just you're not the coolest of guys to say the least yeah well done basically <laughs> <laughs> So you have you have to have friends who will be like who will help you out. How does other people's opinions on celibacy impact you? Don't care. Don't, don't, don't care. care. Don't care. Couldn't give a damn. Couldn't give a flying fish kick about but, your opinion, man. But you know what? I have to be um, empathetic. Is it empathy? Empathy. I have to be empathetic to other people who don't have a friendship group who are on the same journey as yeah. them. You have to ask yourself what is more important or not even maybe what's more important as in cut your friends off but go and find some friends who will encourage you mm. because the bible says iron sharpens iron what so how has celibacy slash refraining from sex impacted your life um for me i feel like refraining from sex has made me swerve males and from swerving mandem i have no uh heartbreak no heartbreak no i have no stories to no story time no damage no damage like i'm I'm pretty much quite a calm person. Like I said in the previous video, when I initially started having sex, it was because I was trying to be a bad youth to God, basically. I just was trying to rebel. But when I had come out of that rebellious phase and I was just having sex with my boyfriend in my relationship, I, I knew that what I was doing was wrong. So when I would pray and stuff, I, would, I wouldn't I would feel at complete ease because I, I knew that I, was, I wasn't obeying the word of God. And it made me feel it made me feel like I couldn't come into his presence completely mm -hmm. and I just I just didn't feel free mm -hmm. do you know what I mean but now that I know that I'm not doing that I feel like I'm free in the presence of God like when I pray I know that I've given up this the sin that was really creating a wedge between me and God and I feel like I can, I can come into his presence boldly mm -hmm. and I can you know know that I've given every aspect more or less what I'm trying to actually give every aspect of my life to God and really obey because I feel like a lot of people want to give everything but their relationship to God or everything but sex to God. Okay, for me personally, I feel like my life has improved tenfold. When I found God and like when I was celibate, kind of all like coming to at the same time. So in general, I just have so much clarity in my life. Like I can hear God and like my spirit of discernment is so strong. Like I just don't get into bad situations as I previously had been um, getting myself into and my mind is just so much freer and clearer that I can have a clear communication with God and I feel so at peace. Like I was saying in the last video, I'm, I've always been a Christian but I wasn't practicing but now that I know I'm trying to really live my life like reflecting the life of Christ, when I come into God's presence I feel so free and I feel happy knowing that now I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And I don't know, I, I just, just have to that well. I just want to <coughs> it was nice. just hone in on, on the thing about the thing about freedom is like the holy for me i felt like the holy spirit was convicting me every time so it's like i want to come into the presence of god and praise and and worship and pray completely but i'm being convicted knowing that it's i don't even know if i could say it was convicted or maybe it was shame because there's a difference between mm. feeling conviction guilt and shame mm. and i don't know at this point i can't really tell you which one it was but it was almost like so you have the audacity to open your mouth 
and say such and such and such. I think it's guilt. Whilst you was in the bed. Hmm. Lifting Fine. your leg. <laughs> she started. Open your vagina. Go swap party there. <laughs> now I don't have that. I'm just like, hey, this vagina is cause. The vagina is cause. So it's just peace, you know? <laughs> it's just peace. A specific dilemma that was presented to us when we put this um, celebrity topic open on Snapchat was that a girl was saying how her and her boyfriend are having sex and they're both Christian. They want to stop because they know it's God's, it's what God wants for them. Um, but they don't have, um, they haven't had a sign. She was saying that what she interpreted from the first video was that Beverly and Zoe kind of had signs that they should stop having sex. So she was saying because she hasn't had that sign, does that now mean that she hasn't got to stop having sex? And I want to just say that no, that's not what that means. Um, you don't have to have a sign to, to know the difference between what you should do and what you shouldn't do. You started off the, um, your question saying that you want to do it because you know that it's God's will and that's why you should be doing it. Sometimes you haven't got to see a sign to know that you should do what is what, what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's going to experience a sign. Like everyone's um, walking Christianity is very, 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 very different. Hey guys, thank you. We know maybe we haven't answered your questions but we're, we love that you've come back. Watch this again. This was Celebrity part two guys we want to do a google this thing we're gonna do a google live, a google live. Google. you guys see that have periscopes we're gonna do google live because obviously you watch us on youtube it will be sometime between the 4th and the 8th of july um and we'll put the link on um on twitter and we'll put an announcement on snapchat when it's up and we'll put a poll for you guys to choose the dates that you'll prefer um google live is pretty much like periscope on youtube so we'll be there you can ask us your questions and stuff and then we'll be answering them directly so that's what we're gonna do Okay guys, thank you again. Mm hmm Nice. What is? Oh. Go to your game. This is it. <laughs> Shocky boys. Shocky boys. <laughs> Go to your girlfriend. Don't be texting. Don't be calling. You're not gonna. You're not gonna whisper in my ear. This oh time. my you're gonna, god. You're gonna go to your girlfriend. Really embarrassing. Embarrassment. Kai. Is your girlfriend not picking up kills tonight, mate? What? Who else? Who else? So shocking a lot. <laughs> the president of um, Shockingham. That was you, you idiot. And that girl who asked me if I'm British, you, <laughs> shut your dirty mouth. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop it here. So I'm gonna tell you. I would like to get to know if I could be the kind of girl that you could be down for. Cause when I look at you, I feel something tell me That you're the kind of guy that I should make a move on K.O.